There we go. It's showtime again, folks. Back with the Truth Proof live stream. Welcome, guys. How are you doing, Les? You all right? Rev, how are we doing? I'm fine. Evening. I'm fine. Yeah. So, people who uh, are in a chat, welcome uh, to uh, the stream tonight. And if you've got any questions, as you know, it's an interactive night with Paul and Jeff. Uh, with Paul and Rev. We nearly got that wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, all right. Look, it, it, no worries. It's, it's yeah, all good. It, we want some questions. That's what we're saying. Questions uh, you know, is what we want. Yeah. Thanks and, for and finishing I'm, uh, that for me, Paul. Yeah. Because uh, I want to got there, what I. But no. yeah. I hope everybody's had a, a good week. Uh, what have you been up to, Paul? Anything? I a bit steady away. I, I'm trying to extend this little room that I'm in. Uh, I'm, I'm building it all at the back of me before I knock that wall out. Yes. Otherwise, it's just going to look like a, a bomb site uh, by the time I've finished, if I start. So, yeah, I'll get it all finished before I cut that wall out. Yeah. So, do, you, do, you, do you know any good builders or anybody? Or anybody? No, <laughs> no. I used to know one. He was called Paul Sinclair, but he's pretty useless nowadays. He don't want to pick yeah. an hammer up even. So, there you go. He can, he can make knives, though, I've heard. Oh, yeah, you he made a knife. But uh, <laughs> what have you been up to then, Rev? Have you been busy? Um, I've, I've been laid up pretty much most of the week with my back. So oh, I've, I've had a... It's all right. It's, it's quite a nice sat down, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I've had a few interesting occurrences happen within the house this week. So that's... Um, you did, you did really? tell me about one. and But shall we jump straight into questions? Because and let, if Les wants to fire it off, but I can see one from Fled and Fred. Fled? We're all getting it wrong tonight. And I can see one from Welsh Rebel. So... Uh, not one in yet, so the Welsh Rebel one I'm going to put on the screen now. Then, Just so the for, question, rev. Uh, for the Rev, if he could visit any area of high strangeness, where would he go and why? So, if money was no objects and you could go anywhere, Rev, where would you go? Um, well, there's, there's two places one would be Davos, and the other one would be Mount Hermon, which is on the Israel Syria border, right? Yeah, um, traditionally, that's believed to be the, the gateway into hell. Is um, the one on the Syrian border, and it has a UN base on the top of it in the middle of nowhere. On the other side, it has a ski slope, so that's quite interesting. And, and Davos, I'd quite like to have a look under the mountain in Davos as to why all these unelected officials that tell us what to do in the world go there and have a meeting and come out with rules that we've never voted for. So that's where I'd like to go. Yeah, nice one. Yeah, yeah. all good. Mm. Give us another question, Les. I would, but there is none, none here. Unless there, you there was, one. you missed what There were one from Fred Flintstone, I'm sure. No, I ain't don't. got it on my list, Paul. That's what I'm right, saying. Right, question. Yeah. Let's just have a look. Let's just go up a bit. Uh, right, Paul, have you been... Have, have you seen... Oh, God. I've, <laughs> I didn't see that. Have you seen Ben Walgate's amazing interview with the dog walker? Photographed a USO, uh, UFO rise out of the water just off Flambra Head. No, wow. I haven't. I've heard That's about it. And yeah. I don't know, Fred, if he did an interview, as in, on, on YouTube or to film. I, I, all I know is that he spoke to somebody about it, but that doesn't surprise me because we've got reports of UFOs going in and out at water off, around that area. So, yeah, it's not uh, out of the way to suggest that uh, something like that could have actually happened. No, I mean I haven't seen it myself. What I will say is I'm liking. Ben's new approach to his videos, I think it's better for him. So he's coming, he seems to be dropping on some um, quite coincidental stuff as he's out and about. So it's interesting. That's good. Yeah, all good. Uh, ah, right. Let's follow on. What happened in your house? Oh, uh, right. Uh, yeah, so this, this, this week's been a funny week for me because I've not, I've been a bit incapacitated. There has been quite a lot of orbs floating about, but this. Do you remember the big one that I saw a few weeks back? Yeah, I do. You told where, me where it. it was just in front of me. And it, it stopped there for about four or five seconds. The ones that are coming, they're a lot smaller, maybe golf ball size that I'm seeing at the minute, but they appear to be watching me. So that that was first thing that I noticed this week, and then I was sat down. Well, I was. Sat here, our last was sat next to us, and the dog were laying in front of the fire the other, other afternoon. And all of a sudden, he just jumped up. Um, and I asked the smoke, What was that? I said, Oh, 
He looked dog just jumping up. She goes, no, what jumped on him? It looked like a cat. It looked like a black cat. Well, we've got a cat, but he's only a kitten, and he was under sideboard hiding from dog. So whatever this object was, this black thing that I last saw jump on the dog, the dog obviously felt it because he, he jumped up at the same time, so we reacted to it. And then I, 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 I had, this is going to sound a bit out there, but I had my hand slammed in the car door the other day. Um, got out the truck, doors open, got my hand on the side of the door as I'm, I'm helping myself get out. It's park level, it wasn't windy, and the door just shut like somebody kicked it. Straight across my hand. Ugh, I, I feel I feel that one already myself. Yeah. Now, this isn't the first unusual thing like that that's happened recently. I've had a couple of injuries that I've assumed are probably just me not paying attention, but it just seems like it seems to be building up. Since last week, there is a lot more energy seems to be directed at me for some reason this week, so it's it's been a bit of a mad one. And, it, and it's strange that the more you're concentrating on it, the more you're noticing it, the more it's ramping up. And that appears to be a way of things, you know, doesn't it? It seems to be. But what I've noticed with myself is stuff seems to come towards me it, very physically. It tries to harm me. And it also seems to physically block me from trying to do stuff. Whereas you experience the opposite. You seem to experience when you're when you're on the trailer somewhere, you'll just bump into somebody and they'll mm. they give you, you know what I mean? You, so you'll get presented with information and I, I get, well, get it's, back. It's, it's funny. It's, oh, I'm trying to think who I were talking to. Uh, it were only the other day. That little dog was sat here. Oh, it was me. Oh, you know, <laughs> I'm losing it, Anna. Yeah. Well, it, it, it followed on after we'd spoken. It starts growling, it goes into the corner and it's looking at something and jumping back, barking. Now, I know people, we, we, we can't attach everything that's unexplained, but it's truly looking at nothing. In end, Mary saw, it, saw him walking about in the garden, so she went and let him in. She didn't know anything about that. When I went in after I'd spoken to you, she says, dog's been acting odd. Says what? She says he's been stood in all, growling at something in all. There's not, she says, I thought it were you. You know, I thought I'd come in like trying to be sort of quiet, you know, but it, obviously it weren't. So Dog had perceived something unusual. I know it's a little bit different to what we normally talk about, guys, but uh, there you go. Well, right. following on from that, we've got a follow-on question, really, about that. Yeah. And, go on, then. Uh, Enigma is asking, have you ever heard about the idea that ETs don't like the presence of dogs, i.e. If, if you're trying to attract uh, them, don't have dogs with you? Is, uh, well, I, I, to be honest, Enigma, I don't know as we're trying to attract them. Uh, you know, we might go to locations and we don't know if they're ETs either, Enigma, do we? We, we know that there's some some other kind of intelligence interacting at times. I'm, I'm reluctant to say ETs because I don't know where they're from. But, yeah, I, you, you could make a good point. But we've also heard about the presence of dogs being kind of terrified and, and not wanting to be around unnatural presences. What's your views on this, Rev? Yeah, it doesn't seem to make any difference. It seems it seems to be whether there's an animal involved or not. Sometimes the animals are totally unaware and unaffected, but a lot of the time they're usually hiding behind. They run off and hide. Yeah. Um, so they seem to pick up on it, you know, quite a lot. So I'd I'd kind of I'd disagree with that. I'd say, you know, it makes no difference. If they're going to come to you, they'll they'll come and find you, whatever you're doing. You know what I mean? If they want to do whatever. Yeah, and, and ETs don't like the presence of dogs. How do we know that? You know? Yeah, I, I mean, it's like the, the, the Egyptians with the cats, isn't it? You know, they, they were supposed to stop the soul from leaving and, and all that sort of stuff. And there's, there's, yeah, all these connotations leading to different animals. But I, I'm, I'm not so sure. From my own experience, that doesn't seem to be the case. Yeah. Before Les goes to another question, I had a, I'll, I had a letter sent the other day. <laughs> I'm not going to share a letter, but I'm going to share what was sent in it. Uh, see what people make of this. It'll make sense in a minute. And uh, what do you think that is? Just turn, turn it around a little, just turn it around a little bit, yeah. Rotate it, that's it, yeah. It's a claw of some sort. That is a claw. 
that someone sent me. Okay. What's that about three inches? Is it three or four well, inches? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bit so, bit, but and before anybody kind of thinks Paul's trying to go down the werewolf route, Les has got a picture because I've I've been sent a bunch of pictures with this claw. Uh, and have you got the picture there, Les? Well, Please. no, I don't think you sent it over, Paul. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> So there's the picture that belongs with the claw. Now, I yeah. know what this is. But uh, I, I'm just saying how easy it would to be. I really thank the guy for sending me this, and he weren't trying to perpetrate a hoax. He asked me because he didn't know what it was, and I, I'm pretty sure I've, we've solved what it is. Rev's never seen this picture before, by the way, people. Uh, and there might be people sat in chat will tell us what it is but i bet you there's people sat in chat equally who would want to turn that into the foot of a werewolf dog man well i can tell you it's not what is what do, what does rev think it is i don't know yeah. it... I, I know what it is so i won't, I won't say what it is but yeah on not... the right tracks, yeah yeah so so well it, if, if if anybody in the chat can uh has got an idea what it is will be uh to know what it is, what we'll it's, it's a it's a genuine picture. It's not something that's been faked, as I say. And uh, I did ask if he'd send me the claw, or a claw, if he if he mm. went back to to where this were. But I just thought, wow, how easy! If somebody wanted to create a hoax, and that's not the game we're in, how easy would it be to adapt something like that? So there you go. I mean. I don't think we've got anybody in chat up with that's going to tell us what it is. Well, if we yeah. leave it for a few minutes Some, and go to somebody, open, somebody's got it in chat. Somebody got it right. in chat, are they? Yeah, oh, that's well, all I'll say for now. Excellent. Right, it's, it's right let's you... have a question then. Okay, then. Yeah, no worries. Uh, just take that off for a second. Uh, and, then. Uh, yeah. Uh, Here we go then. A little bit different. 23 is close. Steve T. Paul, near where your sightings of strange lights were on the walls, do you think that the Danish Danes graves could have a connection? Thanks. Uh, I, su I suppose so. You know, it's difficult, isn't it? You know, it's like it's like saying, could the burial mounds have a connection? Because you know, we've we've we're seeing them in close proximity to them places, or we go to Danes Dyke, which is nothing to do with the Danes, by the way. No, and we're seeing unexplained phenomena there. Yeah, there's a there's a possibility, but I, I tend to think that these these lights have been there long before any of these earthworks and any graves or grave markers have been placed anywhere. Myself, I think that that the probably the reason that these monuments, if you want to call them that, the burial mounds and things, are placed there is because the the, the ancient people knew the importance and knew the significance of the land. Any views on this? Uh, Les or Rev? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't do know. Like. Yeah, I don't know uh, if there'd be any direct connection, but uh, it's like anything in it. It's, it's energy, isn't it? Because uh, if uh, if we're saying uh, we're all made of energy, electrical energy, then ele electrical energy from dead people from thousands, hundreds, thousands of years ago. Could, Would there be yeah, electrical it, energy from dead? People? Well, that's it. We don't know, do we? Uh, but, we well, do you think... reports, but we do have machines what do detect electrical energy from various uh, components of the earth, don't it? Like stone and. Uh, Mind you, yeah, you were saying that, that, and then we've got EMF meters, and, yeah. and we're, oh, well, we're, we're, thinking going, that we, we're thinking we're connecting with the the deceased. Uh, we, we, we're connecting with something. So, yeah. so really, the question should be then: Is there any? Is this, is there still any frequency left from people what of uh, vast uh, from distant uh, relatives still yeah. there in the ground? Well, e energy doesn't dissipate. So what happens with energy is energy just changes form. It it moves into something else. So energy is always energy. So how much of that energy, like you say, is is trapped there, unable to move, and how much moves on? Yeah. But there's definitely a, there is definitely an energy source that comes from the burial mounds that we've looked at, and then some of that I've been looking at. I mentioned about the, the Scottish connection, about Ireland, Scotland, Northern England having this um, connection 
to a Scottish princess called Scotia that settled here. And a lot of the burial mounds, a lot of the dogman sightings occur around burial mounds. Anubis is the, he prepares you for the journey to the afterlife and guards looks after that. And then whilst I was looked at, that was all linking back to the burial mounds. I then found a connection between ancient artwork in Britain, so the cup and ring stones that I did a video on. I found similar ones in what's supposed to be the remains of Solomon's Temple in Jerusalem. So there is connections from here going back to the Middle East, to, to Babylon. It all seems to be interconnected. So the energy, the way that they understood the manipulation of energy, I would assume they're able to, to utilise that, and that's the reason why they have the mounds like they do. Yeah, it, it, it's, uh, it's yeah. fascinating. And the fact that all of these things in vastly different parts of the world are, are similar. Bef before we had the ability to know that, before we'd sort of migrated to all these different parts of the world, th there's so many similarities with what we're talking about. It's fascinating. Right then, a completely different tack, but it's a good mm. one anyway. This one is... Um... Here we go. It's it's an either or, I think, this uh, answer to this question. Clinton Baptiste, was there any truth in the classic Solway Faith Spaceman photo? Who can say I've seen the photo? Go on. Go on. Well, there's there's uh, a little girl stood on a bit of a, a peninsula that has a, a, a fellow in a, a space suit stood behind him that they... The old swear wasn't there when they took the photograph. Yeah, it, um, it's, it, it's anatomically correct, incorrect, that picture. Is it? I, I think it is. I mean, I, I, I'm, I, I, maybe other people must have noticed it. When you're looking at it, to me, it does. I, I wish we'd got a picture of this to put up. I'm just going to put it up now, Paul. All right. Uh, well, we didn't know this question were coming up, did we? But uh, no. Let's have a look. Clinton Baptiste. I'll get it. Oh, good on you. Let's have a look. Um, just, yeah, just carry on, uh, Paul, while I uh, find out one that I can use. Well, it, it's depicted, I mean, I've not seen picture for ages, as though it's somebody looking forwards. Well, I think it's the back of somebody. The elbows look wrong. Uh, I, I don't know whether... It, it's, it, I can't... It's got to have been picked up on that before. It looks like you're looking at the back of somebody to me. Uh, but the fact, what you're saying there, Rev, that that they didn't notice it on the picture, then there's, there's something weird about it, obviously, unless it's a fake. Yeah, I mean, the, the only way, I think, from people that have looked at it, the only way that it could be faked is if there was somebody stood there in the picture at the time. Yeah. So, um, so whether they're lying, which I have, there's no reason for them to lie. No. Or, you know, these things happen. I can remember a photograph um, that was taken when I was about five or six on the donkeys down at Brid. Um, I think it was Brid. And photos came back, and this photograph's got me on a donkey, and it's got a picture of my older sister as, and she's 13, 14 years older than me. It's got a picture of my older sister stood behind me, but she's like 10, 11. Yeah. But right. that couldn't have, it couldn't have happened, could it? So No, no. no. Now, can you see what I'm saying about that? That's at the back. That's the tricep we're looking at. Yeah, yeah, got and, you, yeah. And the elbow. That's the back of someone. In my opinion, it doesn't mean that it's not a spaceman, but or or as they've depicted it as that. But it, I think people are looking at this picture as though we're looking at something forward facing. Yeah, well, you can see, like you say, the angle of the arms facing the wrong way, so it looks like the back. And on the mm. back, it looks like there's 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 somewhat like a rucksack or some. It, it looks like it appears to hump out, doesn't it? On on the back, yeah. as it were. It could be a beekeeper. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, yeah, it could be as simple as that, couldn't it? Yeah, uh, but you know, uh, but uh, we have to take on board because we're never going to know that these people could be one hundred percent genuine. So Clinton, you know, I don't know. I haven't got. A, I haven't got. A theory either the way. I just know that if people think that we're looking at the front of something, we're not. That's definitely the, the back of somebody, and I don't know what that is is that he's got on his head. 
Yeah. Any views, you know, from audience, from, from people in chat? Yeah, put in the chat what you think. Uh, let's have a look then. We've got, just to continue with... Uh, Oh, 1423, the howling thing. Ben caught, Ben Walker, I assume he's talking about, caught the other day in the North Yorkshire woods. was pretty good. Uh, just posted on his 401 files on YouTube. Good lad is Ben. <laughs> right, yeah, well... Uh, I haven't a, seen it. I haven't seen it. I'm I haven't, sorry, I haven't seen it. So, you know, some, I'm going to have a listen to. Yeah, why not? It's uh, uh, You know, when we were doing... To, documentary i believe that you and chris wright heard some howling didn't you les oh definitely and uh considering where we was it it, it was absolutely weird yeah mm. so well i can i can tell way. you now that ben's video is 400 yards from where you were joe's was really yeah that's interesting then yeah the similarities there yeah. isn't they yeah. yeah okay uh we'll move on then with a uh, so look, have I seen this one? I've read this one. Right, Clinton Baptiste again. What's your opinion on the moon being hollow? And it could be similar to the Star Wars Death Star. Interesting. Who can say? Uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I think it was one of astronauts that said that it resounded like a bell, the moon. Uh, but whether that's true or not, I don't know. Uh, and these are questions, Clinton, that We'd only be speculating if we tried to answer it. I mean, maybe Rev's got more idea than me, but I couldn't possibly say whether it's hollow or it's not. Yeah. the I think it was it was either 57 or early 60s. NASA decided it would be a good idea to launch a nuclear device at the moon to see what would happen. And they were expecting it to detonate resonate as normal and that was it but apparently it echoed for about 15 minutes that reverberated didn't it yeah. yeah and the moon's an interesting object because it, it's the only object within the universe that doesn't fit into the um i can't remember the bloody equation now but there's a there's a mathematical equation that everything fits into and it all fits into its place the moon's the only object that doesn't work by that so it seems a very unusual um, sphere, doesn't it? I mean, if you if you look at it, it's covered in crater marks because all meteorites hit you straight on. So that kind of just looks a bit odd to me that you've got perfect circular crater marks everywhere when we know crater it, meteorites come in at different angles. Um, I think the moon's supposed to be a part of it. It's supposed to have broken off from the Earth. God knows how many millions of years ago, how much they want to tell you. Um, and that's how it ended up there. So, But, it's uh, yeah, it's, it, it's a strange, interesting thing that we all look at and nobody really knows why. Mm, I have no idea myself. <laughs> 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 that closes that one down. Uh, Interestingly enough, with the, you know, we had the eclipse. When was that last, not last weekend, weekend before? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think they fired some nukes at that to see what would happen as well. They fired some nukes at the sun just because they like doing shit like that. Who did? Uh, NASA, I believe it was. NASA, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, never, I didn't hear that one, yeah. Um, interesting. We'll have to do a whole show on the moon uh, at some point, guys, I think. Oh, we won't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, is uh, it, it, do you know this then, uh, the Rev? Does the, does the moon rotate or does it slightly rotate? I've heard people say it slightly rotates because it, does, it doesn't seem to rotate, does it? The, the moon? Yeah. Well, it's it's amazing, isn't it, that it turns uh, exactly the same point we do so we can never ever find never the back of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's just an oddity in itself to me. Uh, it is. Else, yeah. it's, 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 it's an oddity but it's like a kind of a perfect symmetry isn't it uh, is it concealing something 28 you days know? yeah 28 day, yeah right okay so lisa rod did anyone in east and north yorkshire experience the hum this week very loud between 3 and 5 a.m was that i didn't uh but last couple of weeks we've been hearing it myself and neighbor over at road uh She's every time I've come out, she said, Did you hear it? And I've heard it a couple of times, two times. She's heard it more than me. 
And it's if anybody's not heard this hum, and I don't mean in East Yorkshire, wherever you are, it's almost like you can't hear it. It's that minimal. But once you do hear it, you can't unhear it. It drives you nuts. Uh, I don't know whether you've heard this, Rev or, or Les, but it, yeah. I haven't heard it this week. I've had a, a, a very high-pitched multi-tone that seems to have been played at me most of the week. Um, I did meet me and our last and her mum during the lockdown. Um, we were all for days we couldn't sleep because of this this hum. Um, yeah. But I haven't heard it this week, no. No, yeah, and it's it's difficult where I live because I live near uh, an industrial estate, so you're going to get hums and noises all night long. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. generators and and machinery. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. So, Lisa, well. Was it all week then, Lisa, or was it just a particular day? Uh, you don't say on the question, but yeah. What, what, what's what's interesting? Uh, that must that's ruling any kind of industrial units out where Lisa is. I'll not say where she is, but I know that's sort of deep in East Yorkshire. Not uh, you know in, yeah, in middle yeah. country. Yeah. So yeah, that's fascinating. Kind of remote, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the only thing that. I'd say it might be, depending on if it happened sort of Friday when everybody were getting stoking, it might have just been that somebody had a, a pump on to pump someone out. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? I know Plausible. Back, back, at the back of my mum's where the river is, farms hmm. on the other side, when, when it starts to flood, that's all you can hear. So if you didn't know what it was, you could quite easily think it was the hum. You're spot on and people have mist mistakenly, at a distance... Done that with grain dryers and, and other things, aren't they? You know what I mean? Yeah. Deep in night, and you, if you're a distance away, you can hear this strange whirring sound. But yeah, all all plausible possibilities. Okay. Well, we've got a um, we've got Kenny Dalgleish Senior with a five pound uh, super chat. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. During go on, Les. During Nam Nam. Mm -hmm. I, I came across what can only be a dog man. It looked like a genetic freak. It's had asbestos skin. These things are real. I ain't no Billy Liar. Wow. And uh Nam, yeah. So that, well that... interestingly enough, in in Vietnam there was a hill that they referred to as Monkey Mountain. And there were troops that were getting taken out on patrols by they claimed them to be eight foot tall, red head, um, I guess, monkeys, but nobody ever got to fully see them. Um, so there was, there's quite a lot of incidents that ha happened in Vietnam. Um, and it must have been a, a terrible, absolutely traumatizing thing to see, Kenny. And I know you're not in a position to answer. Is it? So this would be Andy where we could send Link out, and even if you didn't want to go on camera and just talk and, and, just spend five minutes telling us about it. I wonder, did did other people see it, or were you on your own? And we're not going to get an answer back straight away, are we? No. I mean, can, can can you imagine? I would imagine it'd have been like nineteen twenty, sent over there in the jungle. You know that mm. people, are, everything's there to kill you, and then you come across that. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? That's just yeah. That's cheers for that. Yeah. They were a program on TV a few years ago. I wish I could remember what program it is. Somebody might be able to help me. Where celebrities went onto an island and they tried to survive. We all know the format, don't we? And yeah. Uh, yeah. one of them got lost in the jungle. Yeah, I think it were in a mangrove swamp. But when he was found, because it's always stuck in my mind, I think he was a cricket. But when he was found, he kept saying to the people who'd come to rescue him because they were panicking. He had got lost. Did you see him? Did you see him? There were a man there, a hairy man. Did you see him? And then it went, just cut cameras because it was nothing about cryptids or anything. But it yeah. all stuck in my mind. I don't, you know, because they didn't play up on it afterwards. Nobody revisited it. What did you see to try and get a bit of television? And I'd, I'd love to find out what program it was. I can't remember now. Yeah. I know that's not out of Kenny's question, but, you know. Well, I mean, I mean sorry, sorry, Red, but asbestos skin. I know we're not referring to it as asbestos, but you're giving us your analogy. You must have been pretty close to, to kind of get that impression as well. But, yeah, go on. Well, I was just going to say, if you, if you think about the, the jungle in Southeast Asia, so Vietnam, Cambodia, at that point, 
until the US went in, it was all pretty much untouched. So if there was any, um, let's say, an animal that we hadn't discovered yet, there's a good chance that it would have been there. So if you're going to have Bigfoot, dogmen type creatures, that would be a prime place to be because it had had, up until that point, very little human interaction in that area. Yeah, and uh, no doubt, whatever it was that was there, it would have been pretty upset suddenly when it's got more than its fair share of people or human pre or human presence there. You, you, you know, it's fascinating. That honestly, uh, Kenny, fascinating. Yeah, contact. and I'm yeah, and uh, yeah, and at this point, as Paul said, um, contact details there should be in the description of uh, tonight's stream. If not, just give us a verbal of where. Uh, Kenny or anybody else who's got uh, any uh, accounts like that similar? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, just my name, Paul Sinclair, ilf at gmail.com. And okay. uh, yeah, that will be good. I'll make sure that goes in the description as well. That's stupid. All it could go to the truthproof.uk um, website, website. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Okay. So let's have a look then. Uh, See if I can get this one. Come on, one of you, stop that. Karen Beerman, have you, have any of you heard of the cryptic phenomena presenting itself more at, uh, in sad homes? Thank you, the cryptids in sad homes. Um, um, well, we, we are actually, we are actually going to be touching on some of that in next documentary. Uh, a little bit of an urban touch to, to prove, not to prove, but just to show that people are having these experiences. Yeah. In suburbia, should we say? And if you remember, I think it's, I don't know what number it is, but there's, there's a guy talking to us on here, face blanked out. And he's giving us his description of what he saw as a little boy in his home. And it still traumatizes him now. And I think it is the guy's in his fifties. So, mm. Rev, any any reports on anything like that? I haven't heard of any where they've come into the house. I, I've heard plenty where they're tapping on windows, um, showing themselves at windows that are upstairs, stuff like that. But I've never heard of, um, apart from the one that you're on about, I haven't heard many accounts where they've, they've actually physically come into the house, yeah. Do, do, there's, uh, there's, a, there's a story, and it's, it's more... It, <sighs> It's a crazy one, this, but there's there's a guy, a young, still be a youngish man who had a heart attack without total, I suppose heart attacks are totally unexpected, but straight out of the blue. And he's, he's re, the reasons he gives for having the heart attack is he's in his mum and dad's house, laid in bed. I know location, I know where this was, that, that it happened. And he woke up in the night and he claims that when he woke up in the night, two dogs that look like Anubis, so you just mentioned Anubis, walked through his room. They walked straight past him, straight through the wall, and he's upstairs, and the one goes straight out of the wall, and the other one stops and turns and looks at him, and he's looking at it, and it come back, and he claims he put this thing, put its hand straight into his chest. We're not talking about physically damaging him, and he had an heart attack, and uh, that's his reason for saying he had the heart attack. Strange story. Uh, but that doesn't fit the criteria of what we're talking about with the fur-covered bipedal creatures. It, it is that the same story? Because I heard there was a, a British serviceman in the 80s who was no, serving no, in Germany. Didn't. Right, because with this account, he'd been on guard, finished his, um, his guard duty, finished his shift, gone back to his grot to get himself some scran on that and got, get his head down. And he woke up with a, a werewolf stood over the top of him, holding him down. And I, I'm pretty sure he had some um, heart effects afterwards. I think I would. But... Yeah. yeah. So that, so that's that's the only case that I've heard of them where yeah. they've actually come into the building, yeah. Yeah, well, that would have been on a military base then, would it? It was, yeah. It was in Germany, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's strange. And how, how would something physical like that get onto a military base? I mean, you know, it's, it's fascinating. 
to think that it's infiltrated the base and managed to av avoid detection. I, you know, I talked about that uh, young woman who worked at um, Brit for British Aerospace uh, that were on, on the military compound a few weeks ago, and she saw that thing come out of a hangar, well, years ago. But go on, let's... OK, uh, as regards your experiences, Rev, um, Patricia Adams Wright is asking, sit down with a brill and ask who, ask out, uh, who, asking who it is. Sit down with a brill and ask out. Just ask, ask, ask out. whoever it is that's there. Who, yeah, just give the question out. Sit down with a bro and just, you know, and ask that question. Ask who it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's conversing with stuff, to me, is drawing down to their level. We have to remember that we're above them. Um, so, to me, them, how, how they're messing with me is going to go bad for them because I'm allowing it to happen. I already know where it's coming from and it'll be dealt with. So there is no unanswered questions. It's just clarifying the answers in your own mind. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there, there's an, you've left an open question there, haven't you? One that sort of Paul wants to say, you know where it's coming from. And I know you're not going to tell us. You might, you might mention it afterwards, but where's it coming from? Where's it coming from? Well, it, it's coming from the innate negativity and um, the unbalance that the world's in at the moment. So anybody that tries to speak out about anything that goes against what they're trying to do, then they direct their energy at you. Whereas anybody that's speaking falsely and, and lying from, such as media, yeah, 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 they get full reign and they get helped a lot. So, yeah, I know exactly where stuff's coming from. i just got to work out just how I can sneak back in there and slap them. Okay, sounds like a plan. Yeah. All right, I got to throw this one in because it did amuse me. Um, Sam and Ben is asking, does the rev do weddings and funerals? <laughs> oh yeah, all the time, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's uh, yes. No, I'm, I'm not. A, I'm not a reverend. I am a revenant. I am yeah. born again. I have come back from the dead. So make of it what you will. Okay. Sound like Philip Mantle there. <laughs> Gavin, it's only yeah, hands. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah they're like shovels. <laughs> Gavin's still crazy. Hi, gang. What are your thoughts on the electric universe theory? Uh, Rev, if you want to kick that one off. I've got um, on. Yeah, I don't, I don't really... I'm, I'm not really sure how that... Because I've not looked into that. But to me, everything's based off frequency, which is electrical... Um, vibrations so yeah everything is is based off frequency and, and electrical current it's not the atoms that are the key it's the gaps between the atoms that you need to manipulate okay and uh have you got anything on that one paul nothing at all no no i mean no i'm obviously we're looking into the emf energy and we're doing some work um, on what we're involved in with documentary but uh no i'm not going to start expanding on atoms and things because i don't have the knowledge okay um, tino, nuclear, is that, Paul? yeah yeah tino is going back to the solway faith photo and uh he's saying uh, the only thing with a wife explanation is uh what you was going wife. From, is mm -hmm. yeah is that she looks about seven foot tall in that photo yeah so, but i mean what well, Whatever is stood behind them, if if they are physically on the floor, then that's a very tall person. Mm. You, you know what I mean? But it, it appears that the person's stood above them, and you know, stood on something or hovering. It, it, it does, but you, you know, Les is better, a lot better at taking photographs, and Chris Turner and getting photography than me. But I know for a fact that I go up to Staxton Wold, I can go up there. And I can go like that and take a picture and it looks like I've got one finger under radio tower and one finger above it. And yeah. it looks like I've got it in between my hands. Do, do you know what I mean? I'm not saying it's fake, but maybe things could be manipulated a little bit. And I'd still love to know if people think that we're looking at the front of that, the front of something, because in my head, it's definitely the back. 
Yeah, well, I'm glad you touched on about uh, you don't know whether you're looking at something fake because did the photograph, the actual original uh, negative went back to Kodak or uh, whoever um, um, provided the film, went back for their inspection and they said it was a genuine photograph uh, as it stood. Yeah. Um, yeah, so just interesting. So the, yeah, the photo hasn't been manipulated as a photograph. It's That's just right, whether yeah. or not the, the person in, in the picture is legitimate. Yeah, because I think the, I think her husband said there was nobody in the photograph. I think he was saying that. Correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, folks. Yeah, I'm yeah. I think uh, when, 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 got that wrong. Yeah. yeah, when they said they took the photograph, there wasn't anybody there. It wasn't until yeah. it was developed that they saw that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What about the photographs? I don't think we've got one, or Les might not be able to find them. That were taken by Stephen Pratt at Conisborough in the 1960s of the three UFOs, and they went to Kodak, and Kodak said. They were genuine, but then you've always got UFO investigators saying, no, they're fake. So, you, in a way, you can't really win, can you? I've, and I've spoken to Stephen Pratt. I'm not I'm not saying they're genuine because I've spoken to him, but uh, uh, yeah. I don't know if anybody's seen those photographs. The, the near a telegraph pole and the, just these three objects, and people have right. speculated that he'd stuck these on a window and took the picture, you know? But apparently they were looked at by Kodak and deemed to be f genuine. Okay, so let's uh, blue shift. But the Australian connection, we let blue streak off. There were, they were on the launch. Um, P A F two, two of them. Um, I don't know what that that's I, about. I don't know what. Sorry, Rob. Uh, it sounds like there might be a, a front bit to that question. Yeah, that's that's all I can. We'll have to just leave that one for now. Blue shift is. Yeah. Uh, right then, Mark Anderson is uh, saying, guys, I'm sorry, but I don't think nuclear weapons work in space. Did they you know air to work in? Also, Rev, I believe near four billion years, it broke did, did, off. Did, well, that's I, I, I'm actually with Mark on this one. I know that you're probably right that they've set some nuclear weapons off during uh, at the sun, but they won't get there, would they? No, they won't get there because of the Van Allen belts. Um, and one of, the, one of the things that they tried to do in order to remove the Van Allen belts so they could get a rocket for it to go to the, the moon was they fired a nuclear detonation at it. And all that happened was it, it just created more radiation within the Earth's atmosphere. So even the radiation couldn't get past the Van Allen belts when they tested it. So, yeah, you, you're probably right there, Matt. They won't get out. Yeah, I think he's he's alluding to the fact that you you, you said the fired nuclear weapons at the sun. Mm. So why? Do why did it? Why, I, yeah, I have yeah. no idea. I mean, uh, it seems yeah. it, it seems a daft thing to do when they they tell us that the sun is this massive ball of of um, gas that's burning up at millions of degrees. So you wouldn't actually get a missile anywhere near it. Well, well, the distances involved as well. It's just it's, it's an impossibility, isn't it? Yeah. But mm. with, with terms of detonation, you don't need oxygen for it to detonate because it will create its own, it'll be inbuilt into it. A bit like when you hold a, a stick of dynamite underwater, it creates its own oxygen and, and it still explodes. Okay, so I've got uh, Umpar Flumpar 1337. <laughs> what websites do you use to find out the info, Rev? Are you at liberty to say where you go? Everything. It's not just website. Websites are full of lots of false information. You need to get out and have a look at ancient manuscripts, ancient books, and uh, talk to people. If people sound like they don't, if people put too much into an answer, it's because they're overcompensating. So they're bullshitting about something. People are very easy to find out when they're lying. You just got to listen and, and watch and read between the lines. Okay, then we've got uh, Rivington Pank Beast Lee Roscoe. Thanks for coming on the stream, Lee. Question Paul, did the lights under the sea move and did uh, do you see them disappear around two weeks ago at Bempton Cliffs? Also, how, yeah. is the, how is the Rev's hand? Ouch, indeed. Do your hand first. Uh, are they probably hand. all right now, is it? Uh, you know what? You know me, Paul. I didn't even bloody think about it. So it's yeah, we're right when it happened. Yeah, just jumped a bit when it happened. Uh, yeah, yeah, all good. <laughs> Get the lights under the sea. They, yeah, they they moved. They definitely moved. They were just 
but the anglers further up at the next stand, as I told you when you came up here other week, they must have seen them because they'd got an eye powered beam on them. And as I said, we did the lights, didn't we? We've already put some pictures up about them, but this this very slowly moved. You couldn't see them moving, but they definitely moved because they weren't there. You know, and you can hear me in the video because I've filmed I've filmed them. I've not just put some stills on, and I'm saying they're slowly moving. So yeah. Okay, and then uh, Lisa is just adding to the days that she had the home uh, Wednesday night, early Thursday morning. Okay. Right. Mm. Okay, Lisa. And uh, yeah, all good. All good. I didn't hear anything, as I said. Right. So. Ah, Kenny Dalgley <laughs> Senior. Question for Rev Do you have any news on hiring a boat <laughs> for the live chat? Thank you. Well, I I've, wanted, I've can spoken. You, can you just recap of what we talked about there for people who don't know anything about that uh, room. What do we? Yeah, so about? somebody had suggested that we need to go out to where the lights are in the sea. But Paul has a bit of a phobia when it comes to all things wet and wonderful. A lot of so so I, I, volu I volunteered myself, and I've spoken with um, what's he called, Johnny Depp, and he understands that the. Uh, Captain Cook's ship is, is ready and waiting, so we're going to go and have that away one quiet afternoon, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh, it. We, we talked about it on Cliff's other night, myself, Pete, and uh, Linny, and uh, the sea were roaring, and we we said, like, That's suicidal. Rev, Rev would be better off out there than us tonight. Yeah, we're really <laughs> smacking again them cliffs, to be honest. Uh, yeah, okay. any more? Yeah, yeah. We've got uh, Paul Sinead. If I pronounce that properly, has astral anyone experienced projection. astral pro projection? I think it's saying uh, not projection. Uh, uh, I think it depends on what uh, what your interpretation of astral projection is. I mean, I I don't know whether I've ex I've experienced some strange things. Let's put it that way, and uh, it, literally last week, I don't know whether anybody's ever experienced it, and. It's, it's very rare it happens, but it's almost you're laid on on your side in bed, and all of a sudden it feels like somebody's pouring light into your head. Mm. And I, this is I don't, what a thing to say. It sounds crazy, doesn't it? But when that's happening, you can see places as clear as looking at a film, absolutely with even more clarity. It's amazing. But once I start to try and concentrate, and th if you see people and places, and if I think, who's that? And is that so and so? It just folds in and goes. I don't know whether that's astral projection, but I've, that that's happened to me quite a few times. But, but uh, you know, over the years, I, I, I've not had any um, experience of astral projection. Um, I believe it's where, like, you, there, there is a branch of the U.S. Defense Department that uses astral projection, um, and they are supposed to be able to get into i guess secret meetings and stuff like that undetected because they're physically so is this, not there are we talking about remote viewing here then yeah it's the same it's this it's the same yeah. thing Re remote viewings with a purpose astral projection i guess is just where you're expl exploring but, but we'd have a purpose if we were going to try and infiltrate a meeting undetected won't we you know yeah 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 okay uh i've got to move on because i am conscious that uh ronnie do we only do an hour on these streams guys as you know and uh, we've got to con come to a conclusion on the photograph that we put up, that you put up earlier, Paul. So, oh yeah, we'll, yeah, yeah. So uh, I want to get Has anybody that in. Got also a... first. Just let me get uh, Kenny Girl Dalglish Senior. It looks like Kenny's added another five pound into the super chat. Thank you, uh, Rev, Paul Rev and Les. Best in the business, honest and down to earth. Thank you, Kenny. Kind of to say. Yeah, and yeah. Um, has anybody in chat? I know. Rev saw it and I saw it. Somebody said seal, didn't they? Yeah. Did you yeah, see think, that, Rev? Yeah, I did. And and Fred Flintstone said sea lion. Do you want to go to right. that now then, Paul? Do you want to go? And well, it don't mean I'm right. It don't mean I'm right. But after sending it, I had, I had a look at a load of uh, the anatomy of sea creatures, seal, sea lion. I think it's a walrus. But uh, and it was if I'm right, it was found close to Skegness, about a mile inland. So obviously this thing's washed up. 
So I suppose it could be any one of them things. I think it's a bit big for a seal, maybe. But there again, grey seals grow to a fair size. Uh, but that's a, I don't know what I've done with that claw, but it's a fair length, weren't it? Yeah, I mean, uh, there, was, there was a walrus in Whitby, wasn't there, over the summer? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so if it's come to a, a sad end, I don't know what I did with it. I'll use it for scratching my back later. But uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, marine mammal. I'd have said walrus, but uh, definitely marine mammal. But, you know, if we a bit of manipulation, and I'm sure people have, would have thought about doing it if they'd found it. Some researchers might have tried to pass that off as something else. You know, so all ingredients are there, aren't they? Yeah. There you go. Well done, Fred. Well, there we go. Yeah. Okay. That, and Paul? whoever else said seal. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, then uh, Tino is adding uh, repti reptilians were seen in Vietnam War. So, all yeah. right, I don't know. Have you got that info on that, Rev? Um, I've not heard about the reptilian. I've, I've heard about the the demons that. Um, so the original night vision was called the Starlight System, and I think it had originally it had a green light, and that they, they issued them to helicopter. Gunners, so the machine gunners that were sat on the side of the the UA helicopters, and there's lots of accounts of when they were first issued to them, of them going out at night with these night vision goggles on, and they just start firing, and not just one helicopter, but a few of them, and they described seeing what was demons coming at them through these these night vision goggles that they, and then the the military played about with them, and it seemed to stop happening. So the frequency that they were set at. Was obviously picking up something. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's fascinating. That, isn't it? So, so, so definitely, what military that messed about and ch and changed that? Because you'd think, why would they want to stop them seeing a perceived threat, or what? It the intelligence that adapted and just, you know, if some new tech's being developed and suddenly we can be seen, so we've got the alter as game. I, I don't know. I just because it's yeah. a new one on me. I'd like to read about that. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Blue Shift is um, Bear Grylls H. Oh, Bear Grylls was stuck in quicksand. Okay. Bear Grylls would have been in hotel. Yeah. Do you, do you know if 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 you're meaning is that the guy who saw the creature in the? I think it was a mangrove swamp. It wasn't Bear Grylls. It was a celebrity. Someone tells me what a cricketer. It was. was it, it wasn't Freddie, was it? He, he didn't either one of them. Flint off. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I don't think it were him. Uh, and it were night time and they'd lost him. They panicked. They sent the they must have teams yeah. pretty close when these programs are going, let's face it, you know. And so, uh, all he could say when he came out, did you see him? Did you see him? That there were a man, a fur covered man. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's interesting. And then it just it went to somewhere else. If anybody in the chat wants to Google that, but they'll have to be yeah, quick yeah. tonight because we're only got just, a few minutes just, left. Just one thing on Bear Grylls before he disappears. Yeah, if yeah. you want to learn how if you want to learn how to survive. Don't watch Bear Grylls. All right. <laughs> yeah. But serious point there, because he, he'll he'll get you killed. Yeah. And uh, I can see there's uh, Linny's in. He's got a question for us. And there's Carl Danning. I got a brilliant conversation with Carl a, a few weeks ago. Thank you. Uh, Tino is asking. Me. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Tino is asking. Paul, you mentioned somebody witnessing an entity in an alleyway in Bridlington. Uh, is it? If, uh, can you remember that, or have you got any more info? On uh, that? <laughs> You've just you've just said something. I've just mentioned a name there, uh, and it, it, so this guy will be smiling. Who, I, who I'm talking about? I'd just been working on what I, uh, on a centre at back of the church in Bridlington, I'm, uh, and uh, I'm trying to think of alleyway. Put it in chat because you know who you are. And uh, he stood outside admiring his work, and there's a set of railings steel railings about that are probably about seven foot tall with little points on top going all the way down back of this alley it's the it's the alley that's at back of victoria road and i think the center's called the key center as he's watching it on this bright sunny day nice day as he's watching admiring his work and then turns to alley he sees what looks like a mirage but just in shape of a a, 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 like a ball of energy, he could tell us better than, than, than what I'm telling her. Puzzled by it because he can see through it, but then it starts to move down the alley. And it's moving and it's off the ground and it's moving, almost like the predator. And this thing's moving and disappeared. Well, that was coincidence, that, because uh, 
I've just noticed somebody in chat who could have told us that story a lot better. It's brilliant that we get people who've actually had come forward and told us these stories, having faith in us to come in this chat and talk because we could soon get called out if we were lying. Yeah. And uh, just go back again to the uh, Solway uh, Firth Spaceman, uh, Astral Pathways. I read the Solway Firth Spaceman. Uh, it was possible it was an overexposure of their mother in the background. When the correct exposure of, of, is applied, the colour of the clothes match other photos taken that day. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a possibility, you know. All right. Um, I don't know what Tino means by this. Um, have you, do you know, Rev? Rev, are you? I'm are you no, I don't feel that, are you? Am I returning it? No, I don't return Xs. It'll get sorted out when I meet them. And that's as simple as that. Okay. And uh, Captain Clinton Baptiste, uh, what's your opinion on the Mandela effect? I, for one, thought he had died in prison. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, yeah. There's loads of examples of this, isn't there? You know, and uh, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. well, the, the Mandela effect is... Yeah, is it a case of advertising that's playing about with old videos that are getting reworked? Because there's, there's stuff that I remember that has changed, and it's it's definitely changed. Um, so whether that's just a, maybe it's a big psyop to confuse us all and get us all questioning and thinking we're all mad, or maybe it's just the, the way that they make money. To, to change it, though, Rev, it would involve a lot of corporations and organisations and film companies all coming together. To, 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 I'm not saying that the, Man, the Mandela effect is not a genuine phenomena. There's, there's definitely some at play, or else you won't get all these thousands upon thousands of people swearing down that this guy died in prison. It's, uh, it's maybe not that big a... Uh... Maybe not that big a job if you were to use artificial intelligence, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, you, you know, know Ho Hollywood examples. is it's not just Mandela, is it? I know that's the one, the one that's created the name, but there's lots of examples of it in the other examples. So. Yeah, I, I mean, personally, I mean, I don't know if you knew about Hollywood. The reason why they went on strike is because AI is taken over the job of actors. Yeah, yeah. They don't need yeah. stuntmen. They don't need the actors anymore because they've got that many clips. The voice, it's all. Look at the Writers Guild. they writers are up in arms, aren't they? You know, it, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm, these are no great works of art, but I'm so pleased I wrote these books before the, the innovation of AI because yeah. everything that's written now, you go, oh well, AI's done it for you. You know, I've heard people talking. I'm uh, saying you, they literally write a book in a week using AI. Maybe gifted people could do it in a day. What I'm saying is, you know, if you want to do your research and, and do a book on all types of genre of the yeah. unexplained, you could write a book in a week and it'll do it for you and it'll be syntactically correct and everything. It'll be just perfect. Just what I've sold. Yay, yeah, yeah, we said that together, <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're literally under two minutes ago. Um I have a question from Gavin Still Crazy. I'm Paul Grip, Blue Room Vid. We'll take that. The other day, has there been any other town with as half a question, as I said? Uh, but, um, yeah, I don't, okay. I don't know, Gavin, but thanks, for, thanks for that, mate. You know, I just thought I'd put that one out. Nineteen twenty-five, one. Uh, basically, the, there's a lot more to that. There's, there were a, quite a few more errors that were told in originally in that one, but uh, I just kept it to facts that I wanted to just put out there. Well, interesting, wasn't okay. it? Okay, probably this is a subject for a full discussion on its own. Uh, on the subject of UFOs, what do Paul and Rev think about the possible explanation being time travellers from the future? Sounds implausible, but so does a lot of theories. It's a, it's a possibility. I mean, uh, was it Jim Penniston that uh, said when he got the download part of the information, I could be wrong here, somebody correct me, were time travellers from the future uh, with Rendlesham? And uh, yeah. why not? Why not? If why not? If a, a, we're all be, going to become part of AI, probably not in my lifetime, but maybe we're all going to become part machine. We're going to be incorporated into this great thing that is AI. So if we become so advanced that the machine can live on after this human body dies, the, the essence of us who's to say that that part can't come back in future because it wants a bit of what is flesh and blood. I don't know. 
Yeah, on that note, I'm just going to put one more. Sorry, uh, there's about three or four questions I think read out. Uh, but the last one I'm going to put on the screen is this one here, Clinton Baptiste. This stream should be four hours long, better than any TV program. Thank you. And on that statement, I think uh, we're going to leave. And uh, yeah. thanks, everybody, for coming on to the stream. We're going to see you all on Thursday. We do have a round table. Can you tell me who's, tell us who's on the round, round table, Paul? Please? Yeah, well, we've got yourself, Les, Rev, Rick Allen, uh, Nathaniel Gillis, Steve Mira, and Chris Evers. Steve Mira, Phenomena Magazine. Chris Evers, OLM Magazine. Rick, Rick Allen, the cryptid researcher. Rev, vast knowledge of loads of loads of stuff, but unexplained phenomena and life in general. And Nathaniel Gillis, in my opinion, just a brilliant researcher. Look yeah. forward to this. Okay, so it's a good night uh, from us then on the Truth Proof team, and we'll see you next Thursday. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.